Alright, you guys asked for it. Here it is. Sorry it took me a year to get it up, but a lot of people have asked for a reassembly video of the PS3. Uh, so I had the option to, to do another reflow and figure I would take that opportunity to film a reassembly video. Uh, I wanted to touch base on a couple things too real quick. Uh, a lot of people that have watched my video still have questions. Uh, anytime I put a video up, I always double check the description and if there are annotations, leave them on please because what happens is if I forget to add something while I'm filming the video, I will go back and insert that as an annotation or in the description. Uh, a lot of people have asked, can I use a hair dryer? I've stated in the annotations, no you cannot. Hair dryer just simply doesn't get hot enough people. Uh, a lot of people have decided they wanted to skip steps or take some shortcuts. Anytime you do that, this fix is not going to work. If it does, not for very long. Uh, you need to use thermal compound. A lot of people have asked about that. That is very important. Uh, a lot of people have asked if they can put their motherboard in an oven instead of using a heat gun. That is a bad idea. I, mean, I know people have done it and been successful with it. But here's the thing, when you heat that board to a, a temperature that's hot enough to melt the solder, which is the purpose of what we're doing, and that's what enables the reflow to, to happen, uh, when, you, when you get that board hot, there are components on the top and the bottom side of the board. Those components, once the solder gets hot enough to melt, those components on the bottom side could possibly fall off or shift uh, out of place. Uh, also, capacitors don't like heat at all. If you get a capacitor hot for very long, uh, a capacitor will ex possibly explode. Uh, it's just not a good idea. I mean, please, if you're, if you're going to do this, just do it right. Uh, get the materials you need, the tools you need, and just do it right. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. And if you do it uh, the proper way, uh, you'll probably be pretty successful with it. Uh, I've also had people ask me, how long does this fix last? different people have different results. Uh, I usually get about three or four months out of each reflow, but then again I don't play my PS3 a whole lot. Uh, it's mainly just a video player for me. Uh, either way, it's a temporary fix. Uh, unfortunately, whenever Sony designed the first generation PS3, uh, I don't think they put it through enough testing because uh, usually about the year, year and a half mark is when these PS3 start to have some problems. Uh, some people obviously will, will last longer than that, others not as long, but that's about the general time frame. Uh, the only way to really fix it permanently is to do what's called a reball. That's where you pull the processors off of the board, remove the solder, replace it. Uh, usually when you do that, you use a leaded solder. Uh, lead, leaded solder is now illegal to use by uh, manufacturers. You can still find it. I don't think it's illegal to buy and use for personal use, but the manufacturers aren't allowed to use it. Uh, leaded solder is a little more flexible, a little more forgiving. That's why the older systems didn't have the problems these newer systems are having. Uh, and yes, the PS3, the 360, they both suffer from the exact same problem. Uh, it's a different hardware indication. You know, you've got a red ring versus a yellow flashing light, but it's the exact same problem and the same fix can be applied to both systems. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys uh, a few tips that I've picked up along the way and I'm going to show those first then I'll show the reassembly process and uh, like I say I'm sorry it's took me a year to get this video out to you but uh, I didn't think it would be that demanding but it, it's proven to be pretty demanding so here you go guys hope you enjoy and like I say, leave the annotations on and check the descriptions of every one of my videos. Good luck. Tip number one. I made this jig to hold the motherboard. I've actually got a video up how to do this. I will link that in the description. And I'll explain exactly what it does and why I think it will help. Tip number two. Liquid flux. This stuff's actually pretty good. Uh, what it does, uh, it actually cleans up the solder and makes for a better solder connection. What you can do, you buy the solder, 
or the liquid flux and you actually you let it run down underneath of the processors you do this before you apply the heat and you do this on both processors you do it until it starts to run out the bottom and once it does that turn it 90 degrees and do it on the other side until it runs out the bottom also now this needs to be no clean liquid flux I bought this on eBay uh, just do a search for no clean no wash liquid flux and uh, you'll find it uh, it has to be no clean liquid flux. You can't use regular flux to do this because you can't get down underneath of the processor to clean it after you apply it. Uh, it actually helps a lot though. Uh, if you can do it, great. If not, it's not necessary, but it does help. All right, tip number three, aluminum foil. If you take aluminum foil and wrap it around the board, and cut out holes exposing only the processors you want to reflow. It makes for a better job because it keeps the heat off of the components that you don't want too hot. I just simply grab a piece of aluminum foil, wrap it around the board so it doesn't move. And I've already used this piece obviously but uh, you simply take your fingernails and push around the edges and that will cut through it exposing only the processors. You'd be surprised how much heat this aluminum foil will actually block out and keep off of the board. Again, this isn't necessary, but it does help.